Hello and welcome to this edition of SFG Top Performance Podcast. Mike and I will handle the things this morning where I'll take care of the crops. He'll he'll chip in with the feed updates. Weather continues to be the, the main news story in, in the crop markets. Uh, it's still too early to lose a crop, but we're maybe taking the edge off in some areas. Uh, you can even look locally here, and we've got areas that's had ample rain, and they've looked tremendously good. I've talked to some producers that say they've got the best-looking crop they've ever had for the 1st of June. And then you can go down some areas like where I live, and yeah, the crop, we, we have a perfect stand, everything looks good, but we haven't had any rain for six weeks, and it's starting to show, uh, particularly on the hay and pasture. That's where the, the true damage is occurring today. Uh, here in a short time, you know, another week or two, the crop will start uh, going backwards also. But hopefully we'll see some rain before then. Many uh, forecasters are saying that so here in mid-June, we'll see a shift in the weather patterns and it'll become wetter. And maybe we'll lose some of this extreme heat we've had the last two weeks. Of course, that, all it is is a forecast. It's not a guarantee, so we'll have to see how that comes out. Right now, the corn ratings are the lowest they've been for this time of year since 2013. And of course, we were coming off the drought year of 2012 in that spring. So... Um, things got a little better as we went on that year, but uh, right now we're, we're even worse than we were back then. The funds, uh, I always like to look at where they're at. They, I tell people, the, the folks that are in that business, that's their business. They study things very hard because they're trading our crops they're not producing them. They're just trading them. So they, they want to know everything they can. Right now, the, the funds are about 52000 short on the corn and 18000 contracts long on beans. So almost a neutral position, not too far either way. Uh, that tells me that, hey, if, if this weather doesn't change and we continue to be on the dry side, that might be the catalyst that will send us upward. Uh, we need something. Right now, the new crop prices are are still very much in an inverse position compared to old crop. Uh, locally, new crop corn still sub five dollars. Beans are you know eleven plus. We can't say twelve plus anymore. It's in the the lower elevens right now. So we we need some growth there, and hopefully we get it sometime between now and harvest. When that time happens, and it could, you know, a lot of years right now, the first part of June is when we typically have a selling opportunity, and maybe we do and we don't realize it, but definitely by pollination, there'll be a lot more interest uh, as guys feel their crop is uh, maybe not guaranteed, but, you know, you get through pollination, it's a more of a downhill slope uh, to harvest. And that gives guys confidence to, to price more grain. So the old crop, you know, it's still, basis are good. The, the terminals are, are still actively seeking grain and probably will be through harvest. Uh, there's areas in the country that are definitely in a deficit position. You go to western Iowa, eastern Nebraska, where they didn't raise much of a crop last year. The, the basis is double what it is locally. They're, they're having to draw corn into that area. Um, go up in northwest Iowa, it's kind of a neutral thing, same way here, but, but our basis overall is better than normal, so they're, they're actively looking. World uh, news, you know, Russia continues to be at the forefront. They uh, appear to be set to close the Black Sea corridor to shipping. If that happens, you know, that shuts out the Ukrainian grain from, from leaving on the boats, at least. It, it may still wind itself through on some trains. But <clears throat> the news this past week of the, the dam collapse over there, whether it was precipitated by one side or the other or natural thing, who knows, but that's tremendous consequences to that country in parts of 
even the that, that Russia controls. So um, nothing good is going to come out of this war. We know that. We're doing this a day ahead of the uh, Wadsley report. The June report comes out on Friday the 9th. Uh, probably the the yields will, will stay similar. This report was put together a couple weeks ago before weather become a bigger factor, so I think they'll still peg in their trend line yields. Uh, acres, there'll be an initial acre report post-planning. It won't be the official one. It won't be the final one. Uh, probably going to be on par. I don't. The only area that still lags a little bit is North Dakota. So for the most part, the crops got planted. Probably won't be a lot of uh, prevent plant this year. Um, so we've, we've got the full acres to, to work with when we get down to the, to the yield time this fall. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike, and he'll run you through some feed items. Okay, thanks, Mark. Good morning, everyone. Uh, a couple things. You guys probably already know flies are here. I've been talking to guys, and they said all of a sudden, oh, geez, I got to get I got to get something for fly control. So this reminder to you again that we can't stock every different option of fly product that you want, whether it's loose mineral or tubs. And then some of you need Oreo for anaplyas. So we'd, we'd uh, like to have you cooperate with us and give us some heads up. But uh they're here and uh as you already know the horn flies is the one that's constantly sucking blood for mama and that causes her to switch and stomp and not eat grass and so she don't milk as well so with this dry weather and if it continues um why the fly thing and the tick thing and everything else isn't going to get any, isn't going to get any better either so uh, let us work with you on a program and if you got calves, cattle, whatever up in the yards and you want to help on flies, we can get you the Clarify additive where you can mix it in your TMR, your gray mix, or we can mix it in for you. So um, let us know if that's something you want to do because this way you'll control all the flies uh, that are around the feedlot in your home farm in the yards. So... Again, the positive thing is the cattle market. Uh, everybody knows we're at record high prices, and every day it seems to get better and better. And for fat cattle, cow-calf pairs, it doesn't matter what they are. And everything that I can find out that I talk to, they say that the cow liquidation is still going down for a lot of reasons. They were short of hay last year, and now if it stays dry, you know, the guys have done their first cut in hay, and it wasn't nothing to brag about, and so now they need rain. And um, so it looks like feeder cattle will be a tight supply this fall. Uh, we saw a big drop on, uh, on the mercantile yesterday on the cattle futures, but otherwise we were up in the one for next spring, 184s and 187s on the board. But... Heck, cash price are getting over $1.90 now for them anyway. So as usual, the board don't mean nothing. So the other thing it brings up is these calves are worth gold, guys. And the pasture, whether it gets drier yet or not, let's take the pressure off of mom, but let's get the extra weight on those calves when, and uh, that you're going to be selling. So the complete pelleted creep, you're looking at six pounds, uh, to put on a pound of gain. Well, creep today then would cost you $1.15 to put on that pound of gain. And six weight calves are 280 a pound plus. So it's kind of a simple no brainer. Well, let's put the weight on them. So we do rent creep feeders, it's $2.50 a day. And so we'd be glad to be of help to you in that way. So, a couple last statements. Um, there's a old colleague of mine, or not a colleague really, but he worked for a big animal health company, and he's hooked up with another. He stopped by the other day and introduced a new product to me. So uh, that may be of interest uh, for incoming cattle or stressed cattle and for other species. So uh, I'm making a couple of phone calls and talking to some people that have been using it, and uh, so we'll go from there. I'll let you know more. But again, um, Let's all hope for rain, 
let's get the creep out there and get the weight on the calves. And uh, I do appreciate your business, and I do thank you for calling us and wanting to work with us because it's a team effort, guys. We have to work together, and if we don't communicate, we can't help you. So, again, thank you for your business. Thanks, Mike. Hey, one thing I'll throw out, uh, we actively haul grain off a of farm, especially this time of year, and if, if anybody's got some, some grain in storage and they want to move it, give us a call, and we'll make arrangements to... Uh, get it picked up and delivered to the terminal for you. With that, that wraps up this edition. We look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. Thank you.